And this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shea. We go now to Texas, where Democratic lawmakers and pro-choice demonstrators battled into the early hours of this morning to successfully block a bill that would have shuttered nearly all the state's abortion clinics. Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards delivered the news about Senate Bill 5 to protesters in the Capitol Rotunda shortly after 3 a.m. Senate Bill 5 would have banned abortion after 20 weeks post-fertilization and imposed harsh regulations, forcing all but five Texas clinics to close down. On Tuesday morning, Texas State Senator Wendy Davis donned a pair of pink tennis shoes and rose to her feet to launch a filibuster of the bill that lasted nearly 11 hours before Republican senators interrupted it. Her Democratic colleagues continued to raise objections in a bid to prevent a vote. As the midnight deadline for the special session drew near, hundreds of protesters in the gallery erupted into cheers that drowned out the proceedings. While the cheers overwhelmed any attempts to proceed, Republican lawmakers later attempted to claim they had passed Senate Bill 5 anyway. In fact, AP reported that they passed the bill. But around 3 a.m., Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst conceded the vote had not followed legislative procedures, blaming what he termed a, quote, unruly mob using Occupy Wall Street tactics. Pro-choice advocates are celebrating the victory, but Texas Governor Rick Perry could still call a second special session and tell lawmakers to consider Senate Bill 5 again. For more, we're joined by two people who were there at the state capitol early this morning, Andrea Grimes, freelance reporter who writes for RH Reality Check, and Brandy Grissom, and managing editor of the Texas Tribune, part of their team covering the session. President Obama tweeted their coverage, and they hosted a live stream that more than 100,000 people tuned into from around the country and the world as the midnight hour passed into the early morning hours. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Brandy, just describe the scene. We just heard Cecile Richards. She's not just the head of Planned Parenthood. She is the daughter of Ann Richards, who was the governor of Texas. The scene last night was unlike anything I've ever seen at the Texas Capitol or experienced there, and I've been covering the legislature since 2005. Uh, protesters lined the halls of the Capitol from the rotunda on the bottom floor all the way to the third floor where the Senate was. Um, and they really, as the debate came to a crescendo at, at midnight, um, created this deafening noise within the Senate chamber, which is so, such a place of decorum, typically quiet and staid, sort of steady debate. And um, it just completely erupted. You could hear nothing that was happening um, on the Senate floor, and the leaders in the Senate were really just at a complete loss for how to move forward. Andrea Grimes, can you explain how this happened? A talk, I mean, this didn't just happen last night. I mean, in the last few days, the momentum has been building. But how did this Bill 5, um, uh, what, how was it formed, and what was the activism that led to early today? So, of course, Senate Bill 5 is um, kind of a monster bill, a creation that is an amalgamation of legislation that failed to pass in the regular session. Uh, last week on Thursday, um, a House version of that bill came to a committee hearing. Uh, committee hearings tend to be really small, kind of no-frills affairs. They, they can go on a little bit, but they don't really tend to be the focus of a lot of activism. But on Thursday, um, activists rallied and packed the Capitol. A, a, an extension of the Capitol building and uh, created a citizens filibuster that went on until nearly 4 a.m. And once people who were at that filibuster began telling their stories and sharing them with others, I think that really um, galvanized the pro-choice space and, and really kind of radicalized some people that hadn't realized really what the situation was at the Capitol and how our rights really were under threat directly. And so I think that really brought, you know, probably a thousand people out to the Capitol on Sunday and, and the same or more um, late last night. Uh, could you talk about, uh, Andrea Grimes, who Senate, uh, Senator Wendy Davis is? 
Senator Wendy Davis is um, a representative from Fort Worth, Texas, and she is an up-and-comer, really, in the Democratic Party, but I don't think anyone really realized um, the power and professionalism that she had inside her until uh, last night when we saw her stand and testify for, I think, over 11 hours. Um, she's been a real advocate not only for women's rights but for education reform in Texas, smart education reform. Um, and I think we may be looking at a, a gubernatorial candidate as well. I mean, after this fall of filibuster that lasted nearly 11 hours, um, State Senator Wendy Davis was cut off by a colleague who accused her of straying from the topic because she brought brought up another piece of anti-abortion legislation, an ultrasound bill that was enacted in 2011 that requires women to undergo an ultrasound, have the fetus described to them in detail, then went 24 hours before an abortion. Uh, Davis defended herself, saying her comments on the ultrasound bill were relevant to SB 5. What I'm talking about is this bill layered upon a previous law that this legislature enacted and the further hardships that are created for women. And it's important in order for me to describe the impact of this particular bill, and that's what I'm clearly talking about, is the impact of this particular bill. I think it's perfectly reasonable to talk about it in the context of what women in Texas today will face if this provision goes in place. And that's why, of course, I was referring to the existing visit requirement. That's State Senator Wendy Davis. Understand, um, she was there on her pink in her pink sneakers for close to 11 hours. Uh, Wendy Grimes, so they tried to stop her by saying when she raised this bill or other legislation or talked about the Planned Parenthood budget, she was out of line, she was off topic, and they could stop the filibuster. But w explain exactly then what happened at midnight, how AP reported the vote had passed, but it hadn't. I think there was a lot of confusion um, at midnight because at about 10 till midnight, uh, Senator Letitia Vandepute um, called a parliamentary inquiry and asked what she had to do or say to be heard over her male colleagues. And at that point, the Senate gallery um, I think it holds about 500 people just absolutely erupted in yelling and screaming. So for about 10 minutes, no one could hear anything. Um, the senators on the floor couldn't hear anything. Uh, David Dewhurst, the lieutenant governor and the president of the Senate, said he couldn't hear anything. And the, the protesters really just would not stop clapping. They were chanting. They chanted, let her speak, let her speak. Um, and so as the clock ran down into midnight, it became very hard to tell uh, what precisely was happening. It looked as though the uh, it looked as though the lieutenant governor had called a a roll call to take a vote on SB five, but in fact uh, that vote ended up uh, be ta being taken after midnight. But again, it was so hard to hear over the din of the pr the outrage of the protesters, and at that point, many people being ushered out of the chamber um, to know exactly what happened. So at that point, the AP did um, preliminarily report that. SB5 had passed, of course, that turned out to be untrue. Brandy Grissom, can you talk about the role of the Texas Tribune and social media in general, Twitter, the live stream, how many people tuned in? I think at, at one point last night um, or early this morning, there were um, somewhere upwards of 100,000 viewers who were watching a live stream of the, the video directly from the Senate that was streaming on our website. At, at one point in the evening, um, President Obama tweeted out um, a link to that live stream um, saying that something special was happening in Texas. Um, apparently, he was even paying attention to this moment that turned out to be, I think, probably quite historic here in the Texas Capitol. Um, addition, in addition, uh, you know, we tweeted all night long, um, well into the morning, our reporters started tweeting the action in the Senate um, as soon as they got convened at 10 o'clock yesterday morning and continued, you know, well after the debate and the decision, which finally happened about 3 o'clock this morning um, from Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst when he finally came off the dais and said um, that, in fact, they, they had passed, they had passed the uh, bill after midnight and it wouldn't be able to uh, become law. So 
right. And I think what we also saw as part of this was really the role of social media in drawing people to the Capitol to become involved. Uh, many of the people who our reporters spoke to said that they heard about what was going on at the Capitol via Twitter or via the live stream. Well, it certainly was an absolutely amazing scene. And we're going to end with, uh, again, Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards at the Capitol till, oh, 3 in the morning, delivering the news to the protesters that Senate Bill 5 was dead. In fact, she was delivering the news uh, in, uh, the, in the area where the portrait of her mother, Governor Ann Richards, hung. Um, uh, Democracy Now!'s Amy Littlefield spoke to her just minutes before our broadcast as she was boarding a plane this morning and asked what comes next, since Governor Rick Perry could potentially choose to call a second special session to revive and pass Senate Bill 5? They control the calendar, and they could certainly do that. You know, uh, it's an extremely expensive proposition for them to start this all over again. And I think they saw last night just exactly what kind of response they're going to get if they do try to uh, push this bill through again. The only reason it was even being I had a possibility of passing it because of, they suspended the rules of the Senate, and, and you know that usually required two thirds of the senators to agree to bring a bill up. And so, I, I just will say, I think, as the thousands of people who are mobilized this time around, they'll be doubly that way uh, if, in fact, the governor tries to try to push it through again in another special session. So we'll see, and if he does, we'll be ready. That was uh, Planned Parenthood Federation of America President Cecile Richards. I want to thank Brandy Grissom of the Texas Tribune and Andrew Grimes of RH Reality Check. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org.